Hello Geometry students, uh, this is Mr. Martin. Uh, this video is going to cover uh, five terms. These are uh, the basic terms of geometry that uh, you're absolutely going to want to learn um, in order to be successful in geometry. So the better you know these terms and um, if you, you need to know how to name them, how to describe them, uh, the more successful you're going to be. So let's go ahead and get started. The first one that we have we have a point. So this is the basic building block in geometry. All other figures are made of points. Okay, and this next one, this is kind of theoretical. Um, points have no dimension or size. Okay, so this is a little abstract because when we talk about a point, we think about a dot. But theoretically, uh, they do not have any dimension. They don't have any length. They don't have any width. They don't have any height. Um, and then we will represent them represented with a dot and capital letter. All right, so uh, picture example notation. So um, Again, I'm going to draw some points here, and obviously they have uh, some length and width, uh, but we need some way to represent them. So when we have points, we're going to put a capital letter by them, always a capital letter. So this is point A, we'll call this one point B, we'll call this one point C. So we always use a capital letter right near the dot um, to represent the point. All right, then we move on to a line. So lines are always straight and uh, they are made up of an infinite number of points. So if we, we take an infinite number of points and put them together so that they form something that's straight, it would be a line. They extend infinitely in opposite directions. directions um, and there's a couple of different ways that we're going to uh, represent them so I'm going to draw in a line here and notice I'm putting an arrow on each end okay and we're going to pretend that that's straight the arrows are necessary to indicate that this goes on forever and then I'm going to put two Actually, I'm going to put three different points on this line, A, B, and C. So in order to name this line, I need to pick any two of the points on the line, and then I use the line symbol above it. So names for this line. These are all possible names for the line any one is acceptable to use. So I could call it line AB. So notice I picked two points and now I put the line symbol above it. Notice that little line symbol has arrows on both ends. That's really important. The little details uh, for naming these and the notation is very important. Or let's pick another two points. I could call it line CA. Again, I put the line symbol above it. 
when we're naming a line, it really doesn't matter the order that we put the letters. When we get to uh, other things like rays, it's going to make a difference. All right, let's do one more, or we could call it line B, C. So these are three possible names. There's a couple of more that we could use. But when we write any one of these three, we know that we're talking about this line that I drew in the box. All right, so let's move on to plane. So planes have two dimensions, length and width. And you want to think about it like uh, a representation is a piece of paper or your desktop. Okay? Now, it's going to go on forever in these two dimensions, length and width, but obviously we can't um, draw something that goes on forever, so we normally try and think of it as, as some flat surface. So it's a flat surface uh, and then when we draw it we kind of want to try and draw it uh, so it looks like it has a little perspective so usually we'll draw something that looks like a parallelogram so you want to think of this as like a piece of paper and again it's going to extend um, up and down and left and right forever the way I've got this and then I can have some points on here I could have a I could have B, I could have C, sometimes I'll have um, just another letter here like P, right? So I could call this plane A, B, C, okay, just pick any of three letters that are on there, or I could call it plane P. And I want to make sure that I use this word plane here because uh, sometimes we'll use three letters to name other things like angles or triangles. And we want to make sure we can distinguish between those. All right, before we move on, um, there's actually another way we can name a line. Sometimes we'll put a lowercase letter. And I usually like to make it sort of scriptish. So here's a letter M. Okay, so sometimes we'll put a little lowercase letter there. And we could also call this, or we could call this line M. So we know when we use a lowercase script letter, we know we're talking about a line. All right, let's move on to rays. So a ray begins at a point and extends infinitely in one direction okay and it begins at the endpoint so the point that it starts is called the endpoint so let's draw let's draw a couple of rays here. So I'm going to draw a ray that goes this way. And I'm going to put a couple other points on there. So I'm going to call this A, B, C. And then let's draw another one that goes this way. And I'll call that D, E, F. All right, so when I name these, we always, every single time you name a ray, you have to pick the endpoint first, and then you can pick any other point on the ray to name it. So a couple of names for this ray would be ray A, B. So here's the endpoint. There's another point on the ray. And now I'm going to use the ray symbol. Okay. Notice it looks a lot like the line symbol, except we're missing one of the arrowheads. Okay, if I wanted to give it a different name, 
but we would still be talking about this same picture up here. I could call it ray A. Notice I started with the endpoint again, and then I could use point C, so ray AC. All right, so two different names for the same ray. Doesn't matter which one you use. Now let's take a look at this one. This one starts at D, so I'm going to call this ray DE. Okay, notice my ray symbol always looks the same. Even though this ray is pointing to the left in my picture, the ray symbol stays the same no matter what it looks like. Or I could call it ray DF. All right, now keep in mind that both of these pictures have other rays in them. So I do have a ray that starts at B and goes to the right, and I do have a ray that starts at E and goes to the left. If I have the ray that starts at B, I'm just not including this little piece to the left. So keep that in mind as well. All right, so the last one we have for this video, we've got line segment. Most of the time, I'll just call it a segment. Okay, so this is a part of a line, and it has two endpoints. All right, so let's take a look at an example here, A and B. So here's a segment. So when I name this, I'm going to pick the points on each end, so A is on one end and B is on the other end, and then I'm going to use the segment symbol. Notice the segment symbol is a lot like the line symbol, except we leave off the arrowheads. Remember, the arrowheads indicate that this continues forever in both directions. This little segment symbol means that it's going to end at A and B. Or we could flip the letters around and we can call it segment B, A. Okay, now I could have a segment that has three points, C, D, and E. So how many segments do you think are part of this picture? Actually, there are three. We've got the big segment, which is C, E. So that goes from all the way from C to E. And we also have a smaller segment that's part of that, segment C, D. And we also have segment D, E. So again, the little details in naming all of these different pieces is very important. So don't overlook those details. If you have any questions, make sure that you ask about it and be very consistent with the correct symbols above your segments, rays, and your lines. And uh, we will see you in the next video.